or not, one of the best balls I watched was Tayan Booth sparring Amir Khan as he prepared for British Prescott. And that was one of the best balls I ever saw. Yep, 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 yep. Very good spar, very good spar. I sparred with a Skype wanker, you know, a few years ago in Bolton, you know, in his gym. Yeah, uh, basically he was getting ready to fight, you know, that Brady's Prescott, you know, and he got fucked up. I was his sparring partner, you know, for that fight. So I think I mentally fucked him up, you know, and got in his head rent free because he got messed up, you know, by that Brady's Prescott. And like, basically, yeah. I went up to his gym in Bolton, you know, with Dominic and, um, uh, I was supposed to spar Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you know, six rounds each. He gave me like 20 pounds a round. So he gave me like 120 pounds, you know, for the spar. So he gave me that, yeah, and we sparred on a Monday. And like, I kind of messed him up. I didn't batter him, but I just kind of scolded him. This was when I was on it. You know, you can see in that photo there, I'm in good shape. You know, I'm in good condition. I was living the life back then. You know, I was really dedicated. I used to train hard, really disciplined. You know, there was no alcohol. You know, it was just straight boxing. You know, I was living the life. So I was like really on it. So I kind of schooled him, you know, and I kind of fucking got in his head rent free. So like, he sacked me, you know, after that one spa. I think we had one spa or two spas. And then he like said to his manager, don't bring him back here again. You know, and his manager told me like not to come back. So it says it all, don't it? You know, he couldn't handle the smoke. And, uh, you know, there's a guy called Lee Noble who he sparred with as well. And he asked him to come back. So yeah, it says it all, don't it? I fucking messed him up. So that's what Dominic's kind of referring to. But you know, the Skype wanker, he won't admit it, will he? He won't. Sparring, sparring, it don't mean anything, does it? It don't mean anything, but I really messed him up mentally and he got fucked up by that Brady's Prescott, you know, as a result of that. I was living in his head rent free, wanna? He never took the rematch with Brady's Prescott, did he? You know, he conveniently swerved the rematch, didn't he? Pop it on chin. You know, there's talks of him fighting Kell Brook in there for the fucking 10th year in a row. It's so boring, isn't it? I'm not really, I'm not really feeding into it. I'm not really getting excited about it until I see them both on their way to the ring. You know, I've been hearing the same story for 10 years. So it's one of them, isn't it? I think the Skype wanker, I think he just says things, you know, to try and go viral, you know what I mean? I think he just says things to try and get in the headlines. You remember when he said to Kel, if you beat Matthew Hutton, I'll fight you. Then Kel beat Matthew Hutton. And then the Skype wanker tried to like move the goalposts and say to Kel, if you win a world title, I'll fight you. And then Kel Brook beat Sean Porter, didn't he? I won the IBF title and then the Skype wanker started trying to fucking move the goalposts again, did not it? So I think he just says things to try and get in the media, to try and get spoken about, you know, to try and get attention. You remember when he was kicking off on Twitter about Joshua banging his wife? You know, he was calling her a gold digger one. He saying, oh, how can you cheat on me with another boxer? You know what I mean? He was acting a bit silly, one of the sky wanker. So it's quite easy to get into his head, as I did in sparring. And Joshua did, you know, by, I don't know if he fucked his wife, but the Skype wanker was kicking off on it on Twitter. So I don't know if it's genuine or whether he just likes drama. You know, he went on that little silly reality TV program, didn't he? At home with the Khans. So he's all about that life, isn't he? Drama, fucking reality TV programs. But so was Kel. Kel went on Jeremy Kyle, didn't he? Kel was sat there loving it, wasn't he? So Kel kind of likes that drama as well, don't he? So it might be a good fight. It might be a good... 
might be a good event. Get some drama going on. They love drama, don't they? You know, Coogan dragging Kelbrook over, you know, when he was interviewing Eddie Earn. You know, knowing that it would be awkward, you know, because Kel left Eddie Earn and went his own way, you know, in his fight with Terence Crawford. So, you know, Coogan, like, dragging Kelbrook over. He knew it would be awkward, didn't he? You know, that's what he likes, don't he? He likes awkward. He likes putting the word awkward, you know, in his video titles. Awkward. So he knew by dragging Kelbrook over and interviewing him alongside Eddie Earn, who he fucked off. Coogan knew it would be awkward, didn't he? Awkward. And that's what he wants, don't he? Awkward. But yeah, they had a little talk about it, about the Kelbrook Amir Khan fight, and it was it just went in one ear and out the other for me. I didn't fucking pay any attention to it at all. I switched off about six years ago, so it's like whatever. Whatever. Just tell me when they're on their way to the ring. That's it. I don't want to hear any shit. At home with the cons. Did you watch that program? It was a bit cringe, wasn't it? You know, the Skype wanker, he said that, you know, when he first went on a date with his wife, he said that he, like, hired a big fancy car, you know, to park right outside the restaurant, you know, to really impress her. But that's not a good idea, is it? Because then you don't know if she's with you for you or your fucking fancy car. You know, you don't know, do you? You might say, well, she probably knew he had money anyway. But not necessarily. Not everyone knows boxing, do they? Not everyone knows boxing. I was talking to somebody the other day, yeah, and they didn't know Dillian White or Billy Joe Saunders. And, like, to us boxing fans, that seems strange, don't it? You know, that somebody has never heard of Dillian White or Billy Joe Saunders. It sounds weird, don't it? You know, to us boxing fans. But it's not really... Do you know any cricket players? I ain't got a clue. Like, who's the best cricket player in the world? I ain't got a fucking clue. Who's the best rugby player? I've got no idea. I don't know any rugby players at all. So, like, I can't tell you, like, any rugby players. Johnny Wilkins, he, that was years ago. He's old, isn't he? That's fucking old news. So people not knowing Dillian White and Billy Joe Saunders, who aren't really fans of boxing, it's not really that strange, is it? So, you know, the Skype wanker's wife, she might not have known him, I don't know. I don't know for definite if she knew him, you know, before getting with him. So yeah, he shouldn't have turned up in a fancy car, he should have just turned up in like an average car, you know what I mean? You know, so you know that she's not with you for money, she's with you for you, but... Yeah, seems as though she kind of like moved on to Joshua for a little bit, you know, because he's got the bag. He's got a lot more money on it than the Skype wanker, Joshua. So, yeah, it's, that's what happens when you start fucking trying to impress women with money. You don't know if they're genuine or not, do you? You don't know if they're with you, you know, to try and get hold of the bag. She's had a lot of facial surgery, hasn't she? So she's quite superficial, you know, it's kind of probably materialistic a bit. I don't want to talk about a man's wife, you know, and he's the mother of his kids, but I'm just looking at it from the outside, looking in. You know what I mean? It's... Yeah, he can't do anything about it, though, can he? I've already fucked him up once in sparring, so... You don't want that smoke again, does he? Be safe. Be safe. He gave me a little 120 quid, you know, for a spa. And I was quite happy with the money at the time. I was quite broke, you know, back in the day, so. But you know, these videos, they kind of like really, yes, yeah, a nice income. You know, getting involved in cryptocurrency as well. Bitcoin used to be $1, you know, when it first came out. Now it's about $47,000. It's quite interesting. That's what I've been investing this YouTube money in. You know, and I'm in the green. I'm in the green, man. The bag's filling up, so I'd recommend getting involved in it. 
So yeah, that's what Dominic was referring to, you know, in his Instagram story. You know, he was referring to me kind of fucking up the Skype banker. You know what I mean? That's what he's referring to. You know, Tony Bellu, he was trying to have a little go at Dominic, wasn't he? You know, on that The Zone show, he was like saying, yeah, the Ingle gym, it's not the same. You know, it's not as good now without Brendan Ingle. It's not as good. It's not the same. So I think he was trying to have a little go at Dominic. You know, him and Dominic had a few little backwards and forwards on Twitter. So I think he's trying to have a little dig there, Bellu. But he's kind of right, though, isn't he? Obviously, Brendan was a fucking brilliant trainer. You know, so if he passes away, then it's, it's going to have a little effect in it. But Dominic's doing his thing in here with uh, Kid Gallard. Brendan was a brilliant trainer, man. Produced champions at every single level. Produced champions from little kids. Naz, Kel Brook, Johnny Nelson. You know, Kid Gallard. He was about 15 when he came to the gym. So Brendan, he's got that pedigree. But you know, boxer size Ben. You know, some people are saying, oh, we need to stop calling him boxer size Ben now because he's kind of trained another champion, Lee Wood, the WBA regular champion, as well as Josh Taylor and taking Tyson Fury on the pads and Billy Joe Saunders. But that don't mean you're a good trainer, man. You, you need to produce somebody from nothing, a little kid from nothing like Brendan did with Nas. You've got to produce somebody from nothing. Produce champions from little kids. Naz, Kel Brook, Johnny Nelson. I could take Anthony Joshua on the pads for his fight with Usyk. And then Joshua could go in there and smash up Usyk, who's shit at heavyweight, isn't he? You know, he struggled with Cesaro, didn't he, and that other guy. So he's not really doing well at heavyweight. So, you know, if I took Joshua on the pads for his fight with Usyk and then Joshua smashed him up, does that mean I'm a great trainer? It doesn't, does it? So, I don't know, this boxer size Ben, I think he needs to keep that name. You know, until he's like produced uh, a world champion from nothing, from a little kid like Brendan did with Nas and Kel Brook and Kid Gallard and Johnny Nelson. You know, boxer size Ben, he hasn't really done that yet, has he? So, he's got to keep that name, on it. He's got to keep the name Boxer Size Ben. Yeah, I think Joshua's overlooking Usyk, you know. Because, you know, yesterday I spoke to my local shopkeeper and he said that he's seen Joshua, you know, in Sheffield, you know, walking around, socialising, you know, mingling and having a good time with people. But, you know, his fight with Usyk, it's only like five weeks away, isn't it? And he normally, like, locks himself away, you know, this close to a fight, so... You know, him walking around and socialising and smiling and mingling. You know, with the people of Sheffield, I think he's underestimating Usyk, isn't he? And he's probably right to do so, isn't he? Because Usyk's not that good at heavyweight, is he? He hasn't really been that impressive, has he? So yeah, Joshua, he's not, he's not really preparing properly. You know, Barry, you know, when he's got a fight coming up. You know, you never really see him outside the gym. You never really see him out and about mingling, you know, like Joshua is for his fight with Usyk. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Dominic's doing his thing, in here with uh, Kid Gallard. Barry did well, didn't he? Smashed up Jazza Dickens, you know, really messed him up. I was at the first fight, you know, when Jazza was probably ahead. This was eight years ago, you know, and Barry got the stoppage, you know, after probably being behind on points, so... You know, to go from that, fast forward eight years to just absolutely smashing him up. You know, it shows the improvement, don't it, of Barry. You know, Nassim Hamed, he was trying to, like, give Barry a bit of credit on it. He was trying to congratulate him on Instagram on it. But, you know, Naz, you know, in Barry Box, Josh Warrington. Naz went up to Barry and he said, yeah, you deserve to win that. You know, and Barry got robbed on points. Naz was like, you deserve to win that. You know, and then Naz went into Josh Warrington's changing room afterwards and said, oh, you should have won that, Josh. You know, you was throwing more punches. You was being more aggressive, so you deserve to win that. So he's a bit of a hypocrite, isn't he, Naz? He's a bit snidey, isn't he? You know, being all snidey and that. 
He's not being genuine, is he? He's being a bit hypocritical, isn't he? It's good to see Barry doing well, you know. He's shown that discipline. You know, Barry, yeah, I used to see him in a nightclub about 10 years ago in Sheffield. He used to be there, like, all the time. But he, he wasn't drinking. He was just kind of stood there, you know. And there was, like, no women around him. But, you know, now, you know, he's got this little multi-fight deal with Eddie Earn on him. So... You know, now he's going to get some serious, serious cash. And you know, the fucking dirty gold digging whores. He's going to start to see a lot of posse around him, you know, trying to get to him for the bag. Because he's got this nice little deal now, aren't he, with Eddie Earn, a little multi fight deal. So he's going to start seeing some serious posse trying to get to him for that bag. Do you know what I mean? It's like with Naz. You know, Nassim Hamid, yeah. You know, Dominic, he told me that Naz, you know, when he started to make money and he started to become big time, women started to try and like get to him. And Naz said to Dominic, yeah, these women, you know, they're all over me. They, they fucking love me. And you know, Dominic, he's like a straight talker. So he said to Naz, yeah, they're only around you for money. You know, don't be thinking that you're really good looking all of a sudden and you're fucking really, really attractive and you've got a great personality. They're only around you now for money. You know what I mean? That's what Dominic said to Naz. Dominic said, you're five foot tall. You've got fucking big ears. You know what I mean? You're five foot tall. Women like men who are tall, dark and handsome. So, you know, you being five foot tall, you know, these women are only coming to you because you've got money. Don't be fooled. That's what Dominic said to Naz. You know what I mean? Dominic's a straight talker. So, you know, these women trying to get to Naz. When he starts to make money, I think Barry's going to start seeing that as well. So he's going to have to really fucking, yeah, he's got dedication anyway. He's got discipline. I didn't have it. That's why I went downhill. Even though I fucked up the Skype wanker, you know, I didn't really fucking progress after that. Because I didn't have that discipline, you know, like Barry. So yeah, Barry's done well, hasn't he? He's going to start to see a lot of posse around him, you know, trying to get to him for the bag. It's true, isn't it? Money attracts these women. It's like that Peter Crouch. You know, he's honest, isn't he? He said that if he wasn't a premiership footballer, he'd still be a virgin. You know what I mean? I like that honesty. You have to rate Peter Crouch, you know, for being honest like that. You know what I mean? He's being really honest, isn't he? He's, he's a realist, Peter Crouch. You know, saying he'd, he'd still be a virgin, you know, if he wasn't a premiership footballer. I like his honesty there, do you know what I mean? He's fucking honest, isn't he? He's not in denial, is he? You know, like Carl Froch. Remember when I did a video saying Carl Froch's wife wouldn't be with him if he was working in Tesco's? And then Carl Froch got all upset and started ringing up Dominic Ingle, you know, complaining. So he's in denial, isn't he, Carl Froch? He's not being sincere, is he? It's like Coogan, isn't it? He only started getting pussy, you know, when he got the blue tick and he got a load of followers on Instagram. That's when he started to fucking get pussy, didn't he, Coogan? You know what I mean? You remember when he looked like that? You know, when he looked like that, he wouldn't really have done that well sexually, would he? But, you know, because he's kind of stepped up and he's got his fancy blue tick and his fancy YouTube channel, IFL TV. Now he's getting that posse in here, so it says it all, don't it? I think Barry's going to start seeing that as well, so he's going to have to really fucking... Yeah, he's got dedication anyway, he's got discipline. You know, Joshua Boatsy, Eddie Ernst said that, he offered him fights, but Joshua Boatsy said, no, nah, I don't want the fight because uh, I want to go on holiday. You know what I mean? So... You know, Barry, Kid Gallard, boxing is his priority. You know, he doesn't need a holiday. He doesn't need a holiday at all. It's his priority. Maya Jamma, she's another one, isn't she? You know, the last week of fight camp, she's fucking cold and sick. You know, because it's her birthday and she wants to have a little birthday party. It's like, how old are you? Do you know what I mean? How old are you? you fucking, you're not a little kid, man. Why are you having a little birthday party and not turning up to work? You should be grateful to get this opportunity. You ain't got a fucking clue about boxing. 
You haven't got a clue. You've been given a golden opportunity and you're like calling in sick because it's your birthday. You know what I mean? It's the final week of fight camp. Just put your birthday party back a week. Do the final week of fight camp and then have a little birthday party. You know, it's a bit... You know, calling in sick to have a little birthday party. It's a bit immature, isn't it? It's a bit childish, isn't it? It's a bit... It's a bit... I don't know. I don't know if that is the reason. People have been slagging her off, haven't they? You know, saying, oh, she's not that good at all. That Laura Woods, she's quite good. But this Maya Jamma, you know, she's a bit stuck up. Trying to act all fucking arrogant. You know, trying to act like Beyonce and that. Trying to act like a diva, you know. She's got a few followers on Instagram. You know, she's got over 2 million followers on Instagram. So that's kind of causing her to be a bit arrogant, you know, not turning up to work. She's acting a bit stuck up, isn't she? You know what I mean? She's getting a bit cocky, a bit fucking diva-like. And do your fucking job, man. You're lucky to have the job. You haven't got a clue about boxing, have you? So just stop acting stuck up, man. But yeah, it might not be the reason why she hasn't turned up. She might have been sacked, you know, because she's getting slandered a lot. She's getting, like, ridiculed, you know what I mean? So I think the zone, they might have just fucked her off early because she has been getting a lot of stick, hasn't she? A load of slander. So yeah, they might have got rid of her, I don't know. She might have just fucked it off. She might have said no mass, you know, like Roberto Duran and that. She might have just done that. She might not have been able to handle the criticism, You're trying to act all fucking arrogant. You know, trying to act like Beyonce and that, trying to act like a diva. Rihanna, she's just entered the billionaire list, hasn't she? According to Forbes magazine, she's become a billionaire. She's got some beauty products, you know, and it's kind of taken her into that billionaire club. You know, that elite club of billionaires. You know, Mayweather, I don't know if he's in that club yet, is he? Mayweather's net worth is $450 million, you know, according to Celebrity Net Worth. What do you think of that? Do you think Rihanna is out of Mayweather's league? You know, if those two got together, do you think Rihanna would be out of Mayweather's league? I think she's out of his league, you know. You know her there, she's holding up some tape, yeah? And she like puts it on Mayweather's mouth, you know, because Mayweather's trying it on with her. But I think she's out of Mayweather's league, you know. I don't know. She's quite nice, isn't she? She's entered the billionaire club. She's worth $1.7 billion. I don't think Mayweather's there yet. He's kind of falling a bit behind and he's a bit... He's not really eligible, you know, to get into the billionaire's club. You know, Mayweather's trying to chat her up in here, but she like puts the tape on his mouth, you know, as if to say, fuck off, you know, on my level. It's all about levels, isn't it? You know what I mean? So I think she's kind of out of Mayweather's league, I think. I think she's out of Mayweather's league. It's weird, isn't it? You know, saying that, you know, as boxing fans, we really look up to Mayweather, don't we? We really rate him and admire him and respect him. But you know Mayweather compared to Rihanna, Mayweather's got the status of a plum. You got the status of a plum, you're a plum. Yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Mayweather is not on that level, is he? TBE, you know, it's still not putting him on the same level as Rihanna, is it? You know, she got beat up by Chris Brown as well, didn't she? You know, Mayweather, he's got a past, you know, for hitting women, so... I don't think she'd give him the time of day, you know, to be honest. I think she'd swerve Mayweather. You know Mayweather, yeah, you know, he normally like uses his money, you know, to try and like exploit people, you know, and take advantage of them, you know, like Canelo. You know, and he tried to like boil Canelo down to the weight, you know, and told him that he can't come in above a certain weight, you know, trying to use his money and his A-side status, you know, to try and take advantage of people, but you know, Rihanna, she's fucking outdone Mayweather big time. She's outdone him. You know, Rihanna, she's like the A-side, isn't she? So, yeah, Mayweather's got no chance, has he?
But yeah, Mayweather is definitely the B-side in it, you know, when it comes to Rihanna. Has Mayweather ever been the B-side in boxing? I don't know. I don't think he has, has he? I don't think he has. I remember when he used to call out Nassim Ahmed, you know, for a payday. Imagine Mayweather calling somebody out for a payday. Yeah, Mayweather would have fucked him up though, you know, at super featherweight. He would have messed him up. He would have fucked him up when he may have caught. <sighs> Vodka and Coke. But yeah, I'm going to wrap this up, you know. I'll probably do a YouTube live tomorrow. But yeah, thanks for watching again, yeah. Thanks for that.